Hello, forever friends and family. Welcome to webinar number nine, Think and Grow Rich, the book of the century from the previous century and current century written by Napoleon Hill. Let me read some introduction forward from this book and we will continue forward. What do you want most? Is that money, fame, power, contentment, personality, peace of mind, happiness. The 13 steps to riches described in this book offer the shortest dependable philosophy of individual achievement ever presented for the benefit of the man or woman who is searching for the definite goal in life. Before beginning the book, you will profit greatly if you recognize the fact that the book was not written to entertain. You cannot digest the content properly in a week or months after reading the book thoroughly. Dr. Miller Rees Hutchinson, national known consultant engineer from Long Distance Associate of Thomas A. Edison said, this is not a novel. It's a textbook on indiv individual accomplishment, achievement, I'm sorry, that came directly from the experience of hundreds of America's most successful men. Now let's go to the chapter when we stopped last time. And I would like to ask Zoya, my friend and partner from Brooklyn, assistant supervisor, please continue from here. Thank you. Good evening, friends. Forever, friends. The woman who prepared the personal service sales plan for her son now receives requests from all parts of the country for her cooperation in preparing similar plans for others who desire to market their personal services for more money. She has a staff of expert typists, artists, and writers who have the ability to dramatize the case history so effectively that one's personal services can be marketed for much more money than the prevailing wages for similar services. She is so confident of her ability that she accepts as uh, the major portion of her fee, a percentage of the increased pay she helps her clients to earn. It must not be supposed that her plan merely consists of clever salesmanship by which she helps men and women to demand and receive more money for she for she same services for her same services they formerly sold for less pay. She looks after the interests of the purchaser as well as the seller of personal services. And she prepares her plans that the employer receives full value for the additional money he pays. The method by which she accomplishes this astonishing result is a professional secret which she discloses to no one excepting her own clients. If you have the imagination and seek a more profitable outlet for your personal services, this suggestion may be the stimulus for which you have been searching. The idea is capable of yielding an income for greater than that of the average doctor, lawyer, or engineer whose education required several years in college. The idea is saleable to those seeking new positions in practically all positions calling for managerial or executive ability and those desiring a rearrangement of incomes in their present positions. There is no fixed price for sound ideas. Back of all ideas is specialized knowledge. Unfortunately, for those who do not find riches in abundance, 
specialized knowledge is more abundant and more easily acquired than ideas. Because of this very truth, there is a universal demand and an ever increasing opportunity for the person capable of helping men and women to sell their personal services adventurously. Capability means imagination, the one quality needed to combine specialized knowledge with ideas in the form of organized plans designed to yield riches. If you have imagination, this chapter may present you with an idea sufficient to serve as the beginning of the riches you desire. Remember, the idea is the main thing. Specialized knowledge may be found just around the corner, any corner. Imagination. The workshop of the mind, the fifth step toward riches. The imagination is literally the workshop within wherein are fashioned all plans created by men. The impulse, the desire is given in is given shape, form, and action through the aid of the Im imaginative faculty of the mind. It has been said that man can create anything which he can imagine. Of all the ages of civilization, this is the most favorable for the development of the imagination because it is an age of rapid change. On every hand, one may contact stimuli which develop the imagination. Through the aid of the imaginative faculty, man has discovered and harnessed more of nature's forces during the past 50 years than during the entire history of the human race previous to that time. He has conquered the air so completely that the birds are a poor match for him in flying. He has harnessed the ether and made it serve as a means of instantaneous communication with any part of the world. He has analyzed and weighed the sun at a distance of millions of miles and has determined through the aid of imagination the elements of which it consists. He has discovered that his own brain is both broadcasting and a receiving station for the vibration of thought and he is beginning now to learn how to make practical use of this discovery. He has increased the speed of locomotion until may now travel at a speed of more than 300 miles an hour. The time will soon come when a man may break breakfast uh, in New York and lunch in San Francisco. Men's only limitation within reason. Lies yeah, hold, hold on for a second, please. I would. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I want to understand that this book is written in the previous century. The time will soon come when the men may breakfast in New York and lunch in San Francisco. It's the book was written in 1929. It was no such option like that in 1929, and we are reading this book almost 100 years later. So what he predicts, it's already happened, right? All right. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm sorry for interruption. Please go ahead. Man's only limitation within reason lies in his development and use of his imagination. He has not yet reached the apex of development in the use of his imaginative faculty. He has merely discovered that he has an imagination and has commenced to use it in a very elementary way. Two forms of imagination. The imaginative faculty functions in two forms. One is known as synthetic imagination. 
and the other as creative imagination, synthetic imagination. Through this faculty, one may arrange old concepts, ideas, or plans into new combinations. This faculty creates nothing. It merely works with the material of experience, education, and ob observation with which it is fed. It is the faculty used most by the inventor, with the exception of the who draws upon the creative imagination and when he cannot solve his problem through synthetic imagination, creative imagination. Through the faculty of creative imagination, the finite mind of man has direct communication with infinite intelligence. It is the faculty through which punches and inspirations are received. It is by this faculty that all basic or new ideas are handed over to man. It is through this faculty that thought vibrations from the minds of others are received. It is through this faculty that one individual may tune in or communicate with the subconscious minds of other men. The creative imagination works automatically in the manner described in subsequent pages. This faculty functions only when the conscious mind is vibrating at an exceedingly rapid rate, as, for example, when the conscious mind is stimulated through the emotion of a strong desire. The creative, the creative faculty becomes more alert, more receptive to vibrations from the sources mentioned in proportion to its development through use. This statement is significant. Ponder over it before passing on. Keep in mind as you follow these principles that the entire story of how one may convert desire into money cannot be told in one statement. The story will be complete only when one has mastered, assimilated, and begun to make use of all the principles. The great leaders of business, industry, finance, and the great artists, musicians, poets, and writers became great because they developed the faculty of creative imagination. Both the synthetic and creative faculties of imagination become more alert with use, just as any muscle or organ of the body develops through use. Desire is only a thought, an impulse. It is nebulous and ephemeral. It is abstract and of no value until it has been transformed into its physical counterpart. While the synthetic imagination is the one which will be used most frequently in the process of transforming the impulse of desire into money, you must keep in mind the fact that you may face circumstances and situations which demand use of the creative imagination as well. You imaginative faculty may have become weak through inaction. It can be revived and made alert through use. This faculty does not die through, though it may become quiescent through lack of use. Send to your attention for the time being on the development of the synthetic imagination, because this is the faculty which you will use more often in the process of converting desire into money. Transformation of the 
intangible impulse of desire into the tangible reality of money calls for the use of a plan or plans. These plans must be formed with the aid of the imagination and mainly with the synthetic faculty. Read the entire book through, then come back to this chapter and begin at once to put your imagination to work on the building of a plan or plans for the transformation of your desire into money. Detailed instructions for the building of the plans must uh, have been given in almost every chapter. Carry out the instructions best suited to your needs. Reduce your plan to writing. If you have not already done so, the moment you complete this, you will have definitely given concrete uh, form of the intangible desire. Read the preceding sentence once more. Read it aloud, very slowly. And as you do so, remember that the moment you reduce the statement of your desire and the plan for its re re realization to writing, you have actually taken the first of the series of steps, which will enable you to convert the thought in a, into its physical counterpart. Zora, thank you very much for your reading. Please take a break. And on this intermission, I will share with everybody what I prepare for you today, guys. Give me a second. And Zoe, I need your help. Okay. What do you see on the screen? Uh, the cover, why we want you to do okay. it. That's a book. I hope you realize these two faces. It's a celebrity, it's not just celebrity. On the left side, of course, it's a Donald J. Trump. On the right side, Robert Kiyosaki. I hope that everybody knows the person on the right, Robert Kiyosaki. He's a famous author. He's one of the most famous, famous book was Rich Dead, Poor Dead. I highly recommend for everybody to read this book and share with your children and grandchildren who have it. So they both combined together and they wrote this book, Why We Want You to Be Rich. Might be when we finish this book, I mean, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, maybe it will be next book for us. But I would like to share with everybody two messages. One of them will be from Donald J. Trump, very short about his vision. You will see the details. Then presentation from Robert Kiyosaki. Let me share more screens with you. Hold on, please. I have to do some rearrangement. Please be patient. Thank you. I'm going to play this video and it's a Russian language translation from English to Russian already. But later on, I will ask Zoe to translate. It's a very short message from Donald Trump. And please confirm that you could hear the sound, Zoe, please. Okay, yes. let's do it. We hear everything. Дональд, что бы вы сделали, если бы вам пришлось все начать сначала? О, хороший вопрос. Я бы выбрал начинающую, но перспективную сетевую MLM-компанию и стартовал бы в ней дистрибьютором. А что смешного я сказал? Вот поэтому вы сидите в зале, а я на сцене. It, it was you, you were able to listen his message in Russian language, right? Yes, we heard it. 
Okay, we now didn't I'm see gonna... anything. Excuse me? We didn't see, but we heard. Oh, you did not see it. I'm sorry. You should tell me. Okay, I'm sorry. that's my mistake. Let me do it. You, you will see it. All right. I'll do it now. Can you see the screen now? Mm, uh, yes. Okay, I'm going to mute the sound, please. You will have a text. Please read it, what he said in English, Zoya. Okay, okay. Let's do it. Donald, what would you do if you wanted to start from the very beginning? Oh, it's a very good question. I would have chosen a good promising MLM company and started as a distributor. And the people started laughing. And he said, what funny have I said? Oh, that's why you are sitting over there in the audience and I'm here on the stage. Excellent response, right? Thank you for your translation, yeah. Zoe. And I do remember his interview about on this night show. And they do remember that like it was yesterday, but I saw that about 15 years ago, I believe it even more when he responded like that. Would you like to, let's watch it again. It would be valuable. So please ready for translation. Let's do it. Okay. Donald, what would you do if you wanted to start from the very beginning? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I would have chosen a good promising MLM company and started as a distributor. People started laughing and he said, what funny have I said? Oh, that's why you're sitting over there in the audience and I'm here on the stage. What a brilliant reaction, right? It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So I understand that he promotes multi-level marketing. That's why he wrote the book with Robert Kiyosaki, Why We Want You to Be Rich. That's a cover of the book I just shared with you. Now, let me share with you. I would be very pleased to share with you about 12 to 13 minutes presentation from Robert Kiyosaki. Hold on, let me share the screen, please. I'm gonna get a confirmation from you if we see this picture on the screen. No, it's stuck the same page. No, 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 not yet, not yet. I'm making some changes. Please be patient. Yes. And confirm read. that you, hold on, please, and confirm that you uh, could hear read the sound. Ah, oh, okay. Hear me, Robert. So let me tell you why I endorse network marketing or why I call it the power of it. The reason for it is, as, a, as an entrepreneur. Can you hear it? Yes. Can you see the picture? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Let's watch it. And I will interrupt him because I have some reason, because I prepare for this webinar. I want to make some valuable points for everybody. It will be very good information for us. Let's do it. This word here, network marketing, is the key to making a lot of money to being successful. It's only those people who have an employee mentality working for a paycheck or like a specialist or a small business guy who just wants it for themselves. They don't understand the power of network marketing. Now let me give you, this is not just for the network marketing industry. You know, when you talk about television stations, they talk about a television network. That's how big people think. They think in terms of networks. When you talk about radio, they talk about a radio network. And the same thing, my friend owns a series of gas stations. He calls it a network of gas stations. So the rich use the term network a lot. And I know one of the reasons when I started to endorse network marketing is because in many circles it has a negative connotation. And that's because a lot of times people who shouldn't be in the business join the business or also people abuse the business. But the reason I endorse network marketing is for people who really want to get out of the rat race and really want to get on with, you know, building a business by helping other people build their businesses. So that's why I endorse network marketing. The other reason I endorse it is because network marketing will give you the sales skills or the communication skills or the self-esteem and the emotional courage to go and knock on doors and
Now, I stopped this presentation for my personal reasons. I would like to share with everybody that this video, this video with Robert Kiyosaki, there are two parts. It's the first part. This part about 20 years old, at least. At that time, you could imagine it was no, almost no internet, no cell phones, no Zooms, no webinars, no WhatsApp. So no communication, that was very old technique. And he mentioned the sales skill. I would like to emphasize that network marketing and you will hear what I am going to say right now. He is going to say Robert Kiyosaki in the second part. This is not a business to sell. It's a different type of business. It's a business to help other people to be successful. So it's not a business just to sell is number one. Number two, it was all technique in network marketing company that people knock on the door and offer our business or products, network marketing business or products. They sell product knocking door by door like salespeople, et cetera, et cetera. So can you, let's continue to work. It's a priceless information for us, for everybody. Talk to other people. If you don't have that courage or you're more afraid of what somebody else thinks of you, you'll probably never be successful at network marketing, but you'll probably never be successful in business anyway. So I love network marketing because network marketing will take an average person like me or John and actually work with you and build you up so you have the personal courage to take the no's, to take the rejection, to not really care what, I mean, you do care, but what other people think of you. You see, the reason people are not successful is they want to follow the herd and do what everybody else does. And 90% of the people on this earth when it comes to money are financial losers. So if you're going to become successful, you cannot care what the thundering herd does. You've really got to break away. My rich dad called it the 90-10 rule. That meant 10% of the people make 90% of the money, and 90% of the people make 10% of the money. So the, the beauty of network marketing, there's no guarantees, but it gives you the opportunity to be in that 10%. And the way you get in that 10% is to find that person inside of you who cares more of what you think about yourself than you care what other people think of you. So the beauty of network marketing is it gives people the courage, the sales skills, the communication skills to be a leader. And that's what it takes to be successful in the world is to be a leader. As an entrepreneur, I have built many. You see, this is the second part of his presentation. He even looks much different, much older. <laughs> got, got more weight, but it doesn't matter. It's still just watch every word he is going to say. It. It's a brilliant. Business is from scratch. And as some of you know, a lot of them crashed also. Statistics show that most new businesses fail within the first five years, 90% in fact. And of the 10% that survive, the, the re remaining 10% crash in the second five years. So in other words, most are gone in 10 years. So I've looked at many different models, and one that stands out for me is network marketing. And the reason for that, it takes very little upfront cash. It's low overhead, it, you can do it part-time. It means keep your daytime job, but do this part-time. and. I'm going to make a bold statement and say that doing a TEDx talk is going to be the most transformative and uplifting experience. And once the business is up and running, it can help him. You see, he mentioned very low upfront cash. How much upfront cash we have to pay to be a member of Forever? The answer is zero. With Forever, membership is free. No risk or any obligations, and the new member got a discounted price. But at that time, and some companies still now, some company required pay membership fee, but not forever. And generate enough income so that you can move from the left side to the right side of the quadrant. So let me tell you about my introduction to network marketing because I had a very closed mind to it. Since I can build my own businesses, I said, why do I need a network marketing business? But about 15 years ago, I have a good friend, his name is Bill, and this guy is the best real estate investor I know. He has tons of assets in here. So I said, Bill, why did you start a network marketing business? 
And his simple his answer was very simple. He says, it's my way of helping people. But more importantly, he says, the reason most people can't invest in real estate is because they don't have a business. They don't make enough money simply because taxes, debt, inflation, and retirement savings are killing them. They cannot even invest. So my friend Bill, who is a professional real estate entrepreneur, he says, I started a network marketing business so the people that worked with me could start their own business and then invest money with him. So with that, I realized then that network marketing wasn't about making money, but it was about helping people to help other people make money so they become financial. Okay, you heard what he said. Help other people now. Help other people become financially free. Financially free. So the beauty of network marketing, I said, like it's very low entry point, doesn't take much money, you can do it part time. And where you profit is, in most big corporations, is they spend millions, sometimes billions of dollars in advertising. So rather than give that money to advertisers, network marketing depends on building a network. It's called word of mouth, like you recommend a movie to a best friend. So really, the reason I support network marketing, because it's not about selling. It's about people helping people build assets in the asset columns, becoming business owners, and then becoming investors, rather than going through all of this here, which most E's and S's go through. In this section, I want to talk to you about a different kind of quadrant. Years ago, I found out there was four kinds of people in the world. You know, one type are people who must be right. These people know all the right answers. They went to school, they know everything. You can't tell them anything. This is not a good business for them because their minds are too set. Another kind of person is a person who must be comfortable. You know, the house could be on fire, but they're still watching TV, once, you know, eating a hot dog, watching what's going on in the world. These people are toast because the world economy is not coming back. The world economy has moved on. And people who need to be comfortable will probably be left behind. So the people who, might, who need to be comfortable, you probably shouldn't talk to them because you only make them uncomfortable. And they're probably not going to make the move because number one priority is being comfortable. Another kind of person is a person who must be liked. You know, they want to please everybody. This is probably not the business for them either, you know, because... They want somebody else's approval. They want to be the good little boy or girl saying, I did the right thing, didn't I? You like me, don't you? And so they don't, not, they'll probably not be successful in the 21st century because they'll probably want to be liked by people who have to be right and people who want to be comfortable. All right, good, be comfortable. All right, you're very right. You know, that's probably being liked. But the business for the people of the 21st century are people who must win. And that's where I am at. One of the best things I was taught in the Marine Corps and at military school is not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you stand up. When somebody knocks you back, what do you do? Oh, 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 you hurt my feelings? You'll probably not be successful. The world will probably pass you by. Because as I said, the world economy is moved on. It's not coming back. So winners will win. But winning takes sacrifice. Success takes sacrifice. And these are the people who will do best in business of the 21st century. So when you're talking to people, you know, about this business, you have to look at them and ask yourself, is this person really just going to be like, and they'll tell you what you want to hear? Or are they going to argue with you because they know all the right answers? Or are they going to, or are they going to get very upset with you for disturbing them? So what you're looking for in the network marketing business are people who want to win. People who know the economy has moved on. You'll find every race, gender, age, and background in network marketing. But what they really want to do is they want to win. It really is a true playing field in the world, but not for these people. These people will left behind. Network marketing is for people who want to win because network marketing is the business model of the future. If you want the government to take care of you, then just keep doing what you want to do. It is possible for everyone to win, but the problem is you've got to commit to it. You've got to say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to dedicate five years of my life. Well, look at the leaders and say, those are the people I want to be like. Those are the kinds of people I want to hang out with. That's what you've got to say to yourself. Well, as we know, there's fewer and fewer jobs. You know, American corporations say they're hiring, but they're not hiring in America, they're hiring overseas. 
But more than that is that the reason I endorse network marketing is most people are addicted to the paycheck. And the paycheck is one of the most sinister plots ever pulled upon a human being. If you need a paycheck, you've sold your soul. You know, you've sold your body, your mind, your spirit, and your emotions. You sit there in fear of losing your job, or can I get a raise, or you know, will I get promoted? I mean, and then, and then, why would you do that? Another thing about the reason we, we endorse network marketing, we don't think of it as a network marketing. We think of it as entrepreneur development. Because if you need a paycheck, this is not your business. You know, we build businesses. So sometimes when Kim and I do a deal, we, we may not receive a paycheck for five, six years. You know, and so these guys come, oh, am I gonna get rich quick? You know, and some people do, I don't know if you do or not, but that is an employee, get rich, loser mindset. And so the thing that network marketing does is really kind of cure you of that loser paycheck, get rich quick mentality and actually build a business. You know, we build businesses, but and that's how we're rich, but we didn't get rich quick, and I don't need a paycheck, and I never want a paycheck. So that's kind of a revolutionary thought to most people up there who went to school to get good grades and get a job. You know, they get a high paying job, and the, the higher paying job, you, you pay higher taxes. And you wonder why you never get ahead. That's because you went to school to get a job and a paycheck. You've got to get away from the paycheck, and sometimes it might take two, three years to get away from that. And that's what network marketing teaches people. It's an entrepreneur's mindset, it's an entrepreneur's spirit, not a loser employee, I need a paycheck mentality. Thank okay, that's a video from Robert Kiyosaki, I am now we're going to continue to read our book, Re Think and Grow Rich. And I would like to ask, let me share the screen with you guys. I hope you took uh, some notes. And I would like to ask, continue to read. Hold on, please. I would like to ask, continue to read, friend and partner from New Jersey, the most reliable manager, Iris Cristobal. Iris, please go ahead. Did you see the book on the screen? Yes, we do. Please go ahead, Iris. Can you hear me Please okay? All right. The earth which you live, you, yourself, and every other material thing are the result of evolutionary change through which microscopic bits of matter have been organized and arranged in an orderly fashion. Moreover, and this statement is of stupendous importance, this earth, every one of the billions of individual cells in your body and every <clears throat> atom of matter began as intangible form of energy. Desire is thought impulse. Thought impulses are forms of energy. When you begin with the thought of impulse, desire to accumulate money, you are drafting into your service the same stuff that nature used in creating this earth. In every material form in the universe, including body and brain, in which the thought impulses function. As far as science has been able to determine, the entire universe consists of two, but two elements, matter and energy. Through the combination of energy and matter has been created everything perceptible to man from the largest star which floats in the heavens down to and including man himself. You are now engaged in the task of trying to profit by nature's method. You are sincerely and earnestly, we hope, trying to adapt yourself to nature's laws by endeavoring to convert desire into physical or monetary equivalent. 
You can do it. It has been done before. You can build a fortune through the aid of laws which are immutable. But first, you must become familiar with these laws and learn to use them. Through repetition and by approaching the description of these principles from every conceivable angle, the author hopes to reveal to you the secret through which every great fortune has been accumulated. Strange and paradoxical as it may seem, the secret is not a secret. Nature herself advertised it in the earth on which we live, the stars, the planets suspended within our view, in the elements above and around us, in every blade of grass, in every form of life within our vision. Nature advertises this secret in terms of biology, in the conversion of tiny cell, so small that may be lost on the point of a pin, into human being now reading this, this line. The conversion of desire into physical equivalent is certainly no more miraculous. Do not become discouraged if you do not fully comprehend all that has been stated. Unless you have long been a student of the mind, it is not to be expected that you will assimilate all that is in this chapter upon first reading. But you will, in time, make good progress. The principles which follow will open the way for understanding of imagination. Assimilate that which you understand as you read this philosophy for the first time. Then, when you reread and study it, you will discover that something has happened to clarify it and give you a broader understanding of the whole. Above all, do not stop nor hesitate in your study of these principles until you have read the book at least three times for 95, 96, then you will not want to stop. Iris, excuse me for a second. I would like to emphasize for everybody <clears throat> this section. When you reread and study it, you will discover this something that something has happened to clarify it and give you a broader understanding of the whole. Reread <clears throat> and study. It's a real valuable point for us to understand what should we do with this book. Please go ahead, continue, Lydis. How to make practical use of imagination. Ideas are the beginning points of all fortunes. Ideas are products of imagination. Let us examine a few well-known ideas which have yielded huge fortunes with the hope that these illustrations will convey definite information concerning the method by which imagination may be used in accumulating riches. The Enchanted Kettle Fifty years ago, an old country doctor drove into town, hitched his horse, quietly slipped into a drugstore by the back door and began dickering with the young drug clerk. His mission was destined to yield great wealth to many people. He was destined to bring to the South the most far-flung benefit since the Civil War. For more than an hour, behind the prescription counter, the old doctor and the clerk talked in low tones. Then the doctor left. He went out to the buggy and brought a back a large old-fashioned kettle, a big wooden paddle used for stirring the contents of the kettle, and deposited them in the back of the store. The clerk inspected the kettle, reached into his inside pocket, took out rolls of bills, and handed it off to the, over to the doctor. The roll contained exactly $500, the clerk's entire savings. The doctor handed over a small slip of paper on which was written a secret formula. The words on that small slip of paper were worth a king's ransom, but not to the doctor. 
Those magic words were needed to start the kettle to boiling, but neither the doctor nor the young clerk knew what fabulous fortunes were destined to flow from that kettle. The old doctor was glad to sell the outfit for $500. The money would pay off his debt and give him freedom of mind. The clerk was taking a big chance by staking his entire life savings on a mere scrap of paper in an old kettle. He never dreamed his investment would start a kettle to overflowing with gold that would surpass the miraculous performance of Aladdin's lamp. What the clerk really purchased was an idea. The old kettle and the wooden paddle and the secret message on a slip of paper were incidental. The strange performance of that kettle began to take place after the new owner mixed with the secret instructions of an ingredient which the doctor knew nothing. This Read this story carefully. Give your imagination a test. See if you can discover what it was the young man added to the secret message, which caused the kettle to overflow with gold. Remember, as you read, this is not a story from Arabian Nights. Here you have a story of facts stranger than fiction, facts which began in the form of an idea. Let us take a look at the vast fortunes of gold this idea has produced. It has paid and still pays huge fortunes to men and women all over the world who distribute the contents of the kettle to the millions of people. The old kettle is one of the world's largest consumers of sugar, thus providing jobs of a permanent nature to thousands of men and women engaged in growing sugar cane and in refining the marketing sugar. The old kettle consumes annually millions of glass bottles, providing jobs to a huge number of glass workers. The old kettle gives employment to an army of clerks, stenographs, copywriters, and advertising experts throughout the nation. It has brought fame and fortune to scores of artists who have created magnificent pictures describing the product. The old kettle has converted a small southern city into business capital of the south, where it is now it now benefits directly or indirectly every business, practically every resident of the city. The influence of this idea now benefits every civilized country in the world, pouring out a continuous stream of gold to touch it. Gold from the kettle built and maintains one of the most prominent colleges of the South, where thousands of young people receive the training essential for success. The old kettle has done other marvelous things. All through the World Depression, when factories, banks, and business houses were folding up and quitting by the thousands, the owner of this enchanted kettle went marching on giving continuous employment to an army of men and women all over the world and paying out extra portions of gold to those who long ago had faith in the idea. If the product of that old brass kettle could talk, it would tell thrilling tales of romance in every language. Romances of love, romances of business, romances of professional men and women or daily being stimulated by it. The author is sure of at least one such romance, for he was a part of it. And it all began not far from the very spot which a drug clerk purchased the old kettle. It was here that the author met his wife, and it was she who first told him of the enchanted kettle. It was the product of that kettle they were drinking when he asked for her to accept him for better or worse. Now that you know the content of the enchanted kettle is a world famous drink. It is fitting that the author confess that the home city of the drink supplied him with a wife, also that the drink itself provides him with stimulation of thought without intoxication, and thereby it serves to give the refreshment of mind 
which an author must have to do his best work. Whoever you are, wherever you may live, whatever occupation you may be engaged in, just remember in the future, every time you see the words Coca-Cola, that its vast empire of wealth and influence grew out of a single idea, and that the mysterious ingredient, the drug clerk, Asa Candler, mixed with a secret formula, was imagination. Stop and think of that for a moment. Remember also the 13 steps to riches described in this book were the media through which the influence of Coca-Cola has been extended to every city, town, village, and crossroads of the world and that any idea you may create as sound and meritorious as Coca-Cola has the possibility of duplicating the stupendous record of this world wide thirst killer. Truly, thoughts are things, and their scope of operation is the world itself. Thank you, Aris. Please take a break. Excellent. Thank you, and thank you to Zoe. And I have one final story to share with you. And I hope you have a piece of paper and a pen to take a notes. I hope you already took some notes from previous presentation and now final short presentation, but super powerful for everybody to take a notes and use it in special in the high holiday season. Give me a second, I will be ready for another short presentation and I would like to Zoe to continue from Russian to English. Zoe, what do you see on the screen, please? Our last page we were reading. Oh no. Are you a ready? Glass. Yes. A glass. Okay. Please translate from Russian to English and please everybody to take a notes. <laughs> Stop laughing. How much wine do you need in your glass? At the very lower for professional tasting? For going out in a restaurant? romantic dinner, for meeting with your girlfriend, for a hot day, for a very hot day, after watching news. Everybody took a notes? Would you would you like to watch it again? Just do not miss anything. Let's do it before holiday season. Zoe, please translate and be serious. It's a very serious subject. How much wine do you need in your glass? For professional tasting. For going out in a restaurant. For romantic dinner. Meeting with your girlfriend for a hot day, for a very hot day, after watching news. Okay, are you ready for a holiday season? Yes, we are ready. Yes. Okay. And this webinar is recording, so if you want to memorize or take additional notes, be ready to join and share with your friends and family. I'll see you next week. Thank you, readers, and thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Happy holiday season. Good night. Happy thank holiday you. season. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night.